Young in Australia, I, I, uh, he, he instructed me to do a 15 minute magic show and I thought he, I thought he said 50 minute and, and, and 14 minutes later. But anyway, uh, so we will perform a short one tonight and another one another night. Um, I would like, also like to ask, uh, who was, if you can just put your hand up, who didn't see the show last year? Good. <laughs> because some of you might have the illusion that some of these tricks you might have remembered from last year, but I assure you, you were totally wrong. It was, uh, it was part of your mind. I, I, I'm going to perform some magic over those people who thought they saw some tricks last year they recognised. This is your memory of those who thought they saw these tricks last year. I now remove that memory. It's gone. <laughs> However, when I informed my mother, it's you that he got to. However, uh, do not hide your enthusiasm and your applause and your appreciation for Guru Day's pleasure of this show. Because when I go home, and my mother will say, Oh, did they enjoy your show? Did they give you a standing ovation? <laughs> now, a very interesting story. My mother, when Guru Day was in Australia two years ago, my mother was so attracted uh, in her heart, and she was bedridden with a acute uh, or very chronic uh, sciatica. But also, she only had three or four months to live with leukemia. And she asked me to come and help her out of bed to come and meet Guru Dave. And she got so nicely dressed with her long white trousers and her, her shirt and her little gold pendant. And she came to see Guru Dave and she could not hesitate, but she had a, a, a darshan in the morning and in the afternoon she could not help but to, to approach uh, Guru Dave on her knees and asked for initiation and inspiration. And Guru Dave gave straight away. And he called her Mother Malati. Malati Krishna's favorite flower. But, not also, but also, she could not quite comprehend the full Maha Mantra. So he gave her a special mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. <laughs> now mind you, my mother's the same age as our Guru Maharaj. And uh, later on, she said, uh, son, he said that, um, he called me his daughter, and he put me in his heart like that, he called me his daughter. Well, in actual fact, he's old enough to be my husband. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she appreciated <laughs> But she asked me, she said, what is this connection, Guru, guru and, 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 and disciple? And I said, well, Mother, I will try to explain, but there is no such thing as perfect example. So the best I could do was this. Very perverted uh, example. This uh, symbolized Krishna, or Guru Day, same, same. Uh, never ending. Perfect love. This is us, or my mother. Uh, I said, Mother, when you came, a lot of people are knocking at the door. Uh, but you, uh, you have to. You made connection like that. And you're really fortunate to stay in the Some people join, get connected. Sometimes they fall away like that too. Okay, I have uh, a volunteer who's not afraid to die. <laughs> You get some people approach, huh? they join, huh? like that. Some people fall, like that. Where's my volunteer? Don't be afraid to approach. You okay? Yeah, kind of. Send your prayers? Yeah. Huh? I'm a little scared. Because those that do fall down, oh, excuse me, I didn't say anything. Oh, just give me this knife. Just give me this knife. 
This look, this look a good eye. This look a good eye. This look a good eye. No, 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 just relax, be alright. Why don't you try and hurt a bit? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Stand up, stand up. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's just an illusion. See? You're all right. Huh? You can, you can go and wipe that blood off this. Very cool. Now this magic show, it's going to start off like a locomotive. Very slow. A bit faster, then I really got loco. And then I said to Mother Melody, oh, What is this connection from Krishna to Lord Chaitanya to Gurudev today? I said, Ah, oh, Parampara. She said, Mother, it's like this Krishna. Something like this. From Krishna to Parampara, excuse my uh, <laughs> my mistakes. Parampara. So we have that kind of connection like that. Anyway. <laughs> I have three pieces of rope. Now can someone offer me an example of something that's free in Vedic philosophy? Huh? Three modes of material nature. You sure? You don't want to change your mind? You happy with the mind you've got? Okay. Ah, mode of ignorance. Mode of passion. Mode of goodness. Hopefully, we're striking for this one. So, and we get these ropes, it's a rope. And we put them together. Goodness, passion, ignorance. Now, even though we're people are in these different modes, Krishna still loves us equally. But I do believe that Krishna has a, an attraction to devotee. Huh? So, we have three equal pieces of rope. We have one, two, and three equal pieces of rope. Now, we tie this one together. Two equal pieces of rope. We tie this one together. We have three equal pieces of rope. Now it's like this, this knot here is a very hard, very tough knot. And it's symbolic of some of us when sometimes we're, we, can we persevere through foul weather or fair. We have a foul weather devotee, problems come along, no problem. Maybe the foul weather devotee uh, slips like that. However, we still have eternally three pieces of rock. What do you think about that? Anyway. Now, we, we, we don't do the favourite one because we always do this because it's the only way I can get some maha out of, out of Gurudev. Gurudev, what, what, uh, what, what I request you, would you please offer me five dollar note, please? He's always got five dollars from me. I have so many maha five dollar notes. You can pass. Actually, it's a picture of my mother. <laughs> Australian, very colourful uh, money, as you can see. Plastic too. You can wash it, but don't iron it. So, watch very carefully. We fold this in half. Don't take your eyes off it. As you can see, huh? empty hands. Huh? We fold it in half again. 
and we fold it in half again. And then, magically, five dollars has grown into one hundred dollars. Okay, we can go back. You didn't see that one before, did you? Now, if I have another volunteer, hang on, hang on. We get this $100 note, okay? We fold up like this, okay? Now, I want you to hold that money there. No, it's not on the top. It's good. <laughs> Hold tight. You feel the money? You got it? Now, see Guru Dave? Watch Guru Dave. This is going to be transported through cyber, through space, to convert many worlds. Huh? Hang on to the money. You got it? One, two, shoo, three. To Guru Dave. Now, Guru Dave, this might take a few seconds from your, you're from another dimension. <laughs> But if you were to check out your, let me see, your left pocket, please. Heartedness and, and it's nice to develop or maintain a life, an essential childlike heart with a light-hearted disposition. And even though the body ages, the spirit is eternally young. We're only young ones, but we can be immature indefinitely. <laughs> now you probably remember Rocky Raccoon, some of you. Some of you remember Rocky Raccoon. Okay, let me see. Oh. Before we get to Rocky Raccoon. Some people, some people are addicted to drinking. Huh? Now I have a good way of getting rid of this terrible affliction. This bottle, which most people are addicted to for sense enjoyment, and we put it in this bag. It's very easy. You just shh, on a little magic like that. Shoo, gone. See? Has it gone? You don't think so? Hang on, I think you're right. Still there. <laughs> Hang on. I've got a really thing here. Oh no, that way. Okay. Go on. Ah, uh, keep getting out there. Now, what we were doing, when we were in Russia with the Swamis two years ago, we, were, we went, uh, Rocky got out and he went to a place called Chernobyl where they had a nuclear meltdown here in Maharaj. You remember Chernobyl? Nuclear melt. Anyway, Rocky made it. And I have uh, Rocky's son, Rocky Raccoon Jr., here tonight. And he tells me there's nothing, he tells me he's a little bit deformed, but I love him so much I don't see any imperfections. Here he is. Here's Rocky the King. <laughs> but he said there's something wrong with him, and I think he's lying. I, don't, I, I can't see any, anything wrong with the little fellow saying he's from Chernobyl. <laughs> I don't see any uh, deformity. Anyway, this is Rocky Raccoon. You know, you know what he does if he loves you? Huh? If he loves you, you watch. <laughs> Oh, quick. Naughty boy. Anyway, Rocky's very shy, actually. 
Come here, come here, come here. Anyway, he wants you to blink at you. That's good, eh? He loves a girl too, I'm not worried about him. Actually, I'm not worried about him. He loves a girl too, good boy. Anyway, quick story about Rocky Raccoon. Oh no, we'll come back to the original Rocky Raccoon. We were flying from, uh, with the Swamis of Anya Bagnasar from Washington to uh, Switzerland. I had the window seat. Rocky was down here. Parked his side there on the aisle seat. Hey, Rocky, you got your seatbelt on? Not a problem, he said. Not a problem. We're up in the air. We put our tray down. An hour later, the light is a little dark. It's a night flight. The stewardess came up. I said, oh, look, excuse me. Rocky hasn't eaten for three days since we're in Florida. He's very hungry. He's very thirsty. Oh, he's a cute little fella, isn't he? She brought in some popcorn. Oh, she was very good. Rocky, no, this is offered, all right? Offered. You have to offer first. Hey, Rocky? Yes, yeah, not a problem. <laughs> he was very hungry. <laughs> Finish the plate off, no problem. <laughs> and he was thirsty. Oh, yes. Okay, look at that, eh? Hey? Okay, boys. Very thirsty little fella, but you know what he used to drink. So, anyway, an hour later, the other airline attendant came up. I said, thank you very much for that uh, food and water you offered Rocky. He's uh, very replenished and he's looking very well. And Rocky was another airline attendant. They used to call them hostesses or cabin crew. You know, cabin crew, that's what it was. She said, sir, what are you doing with that live animal on my plane? You're not allowed to have a live animal on my plane. I'm going to tell the head steward and the captain. I said, oh, Rocky, we're in, we're in for it now. We've done this many times, but they've got us. Look. So anyway, he was getting a little bit upset. And the stewardess said, sir, I'm, I, I mean this. There's no live animals allowed on the plane. I'm going to tell the head steward and the captain. I said, Rocky, we're going to do something here. Just, just, just go along with me, all right? Just go along with me. Okay, so I've got the window there. So I've got Rocky and went bang against the window. I said, just play dead, Rocky. Just play dead. Otherwise, we're not going to get it. We're, we're going to be in big trouble. She said, sir, there was no need to kill him. We couldn't put him up the front of the plane. I said, just play dead, Rocky. It's all right. Don't worry. Now, all the people in the middle of... He's going to be all right. All the people in the middle of the plane looking at me going, that nasty man over there, he's killed that beautiful raccoon. I said, look, don't worry. I said, I come from a surf club in Australia, and in the 60s, way, well, way before a lot of you people were born, I learned mouth to nose resuscitation. I did. And this is probably the first time ever that I can apply it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ramesh. <laughs> Keep it up, Ramesh. Oh. Everyone's looking like that. Silent. Is it Rocky? You okay, Rocky? Oh, wonderful. Rocky's coming good. I see Rocky get in the bag in big trouble. Okay, what smells around here? <coughs> oh, how did you get in here? God, get out of here. <laughs> now, there's going to be more. We get better, hopefully, in a couple of months' time. I often wonder when we go to read the newspapers. We read the newspapers, what is in there, really? I call it the instant downer. We got all that. The drama, well, the cricket here, actually, what is it? Oh, it's a, uh, oh, it's a Calcutta newspaper, funny, huh? We have all the drama of, you know, the war in Iraq, the uh, stocks and shares, how many people are losing, so many things. And I think, what a lot of rubbish. What a lot of rubbish, we don't need this. Is there anything inspirational in there? Is there anything that's going to... Fill, our, fill us with, with nice knowledge to become better human beings. Huh? So, oh, so I, try, I, throw, I, I throw it all away. Okay. And I wonder, 
Wouldn't it be nice to go to the news agent sometime or to some place where you can buy something with a little bit of value and it comes out like, when you open the page, it comes out like this? two months, I took her to the oncologist for the blood report that we did every three months. And the oncologist fell off the chair. Uh, he could not believe that my mother's blood was normal uh, because it was 15 times higher and that, that was normal and still is two years later. And there was no other... She was only taking something to help her cope with it. She didn't want to get sick from chemo. Now she's in good spirit. She's 100 mile an hour. She's in good energy. I believe that thanks to Good Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Save the standing ovation for, for the next night.
नमो महावदनाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नमः गौरत्विशे गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय इतराले कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय First of all, my millions of humble obeisances in the lotus feet of my Karma Radhadev, Om Vishnu Pasi Smad Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Swami Maharaj, and same thousands of humble obeisances in the lotus feet of my Siksha Guru, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj. मैं तो ऐसा सोच रहा था कि यहाँ हिंदी समझने वाले लोग होंगे तो मैं हिंदी में ही अच्छी तरह से बोल सकता मेरी अंग्रेजी टूटी फूटी हुई लंगड़ी ही है उसमें मैं अपने भावों को अच्छी तरह से प्रकाश नहीं कर पाता हिंदी में खूब अच्छी तरह से बंगला में और और भारतीय भाषाओं में बंगाली इत्यादि में बहुत अच्छी तरह से बोल सकते बट आई थिंक दैट देर आर सो मेनी ऑल्सो मेजोरिटी मेजोरिटी लाइक दैट ओवर डिवोटिज फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ अमेरिका हियर एंड देयर ऑस्ट्रेलिया कैनेडा एंड हियर एंड देयर देर एसेंबल्ड हियर so, oh, there are so many seats here and there you can sit. Oh, you can come here. Here there is so much seat. Oh, so much seat. Hmm. So, <coughs> I will have to speak in English. I want to tell that though Dr. Sahib, what? Mukeshji. Eh? Mukeshji. Mukesh, Mukeshji had introduced me. But yet something I want to tell you that when I join for this life in 1946, Oh, there was so much relation from Swamiji, Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. At that time he was Abhaycharan. But very soon I received from my holy master renounce order sannyas. And he after me, so I am senior in sannyas. <laughs> I am Bhakti Vedanta Narayan. And he is Bhakti Vedanta Swami Ji, Junior. But he is my Siksha Guru. <laughs> because he is a God brother of my Guru, Junior to my God brother, to my Guru Dev. They were Bhujam friends, very friends. So, of oh, that Swami Ji, Abhaycharan Prabhu, took sannyas from my Gurudev in Mathura, in Kesavji Gaudiyama, and I was priest, man priest. I made his danda, door coffin, cloths, and I teach him, taught him how to use these things. Fire sacrifice also, and also everything. And when he came to 
अमेरिका है ये न्यू जर्सी और हियर एंड देयर न्यू यॉर्क ही ऑलवेज रिक्वेस्टेड मी टू कम एंड टू प्रीच विथ हिम बट आई वॉज दैट टाइम एंगेज इन दिस सर्विस माई होली मास्टर आई ऑलवेज हेल्प डिम बंडल ऑफ बुक्स आई सेंट फ्रॉम न्यू डेली सो मेनी डीटीज मृदंग करता वॉट ही नीडेड इवन ही वॉज वेरी फॉन्ड ऑफ स्वीट्स ऑफ मथुरा पेड़ ऑफ एंड आई यूज टू सेंट हिम ऑल्सो ओ फाइव किलोज टेन किलोज लाइक also you should know that in his last day when he was going to pass away from this world he called me from mathura i went to vrindavan and with weeping melting heart he took my hands in his hand and he told that oh you so forgive me for my offenses that i have done to you or my god brothers i have done something wrong i told that no not done nothing wrong something is done but it is not so wrong so <coughs> then he told that i want that i request you so give my samadhi here with your own hand because you are perfect in all these things i want that by your own hand you should do there were so many his god brothers and his all disciples gbc disciples were there but he in front of them he requested to do i told i accept your proposal i did so and he requested me that you should kindly help my devotees i have brought them from various countries they are quite young i think that i wanted to train them but i could not train so please help them i told yes i accept also i will do and for this i came i have not come for money that so many persons even prime minister comes to fake something in america but i have not come i have come from a very high wealthy india hmm? that if i will give you one drop of that thing vedic cultural things pure bhakti your life will be successful and you will be happy forever it is guarantee you have come from so many come from india for wealth to collect some money but i have <coughs> come for that i am very rich in india <laughs> oh you know geeta shrimad bhagavatam ved upanishad purana the instructions of them are high class of nectar more than millions time more than nectar and by that you are ha- you can be happy what you are collecting and what you are doing now you cannot be happy with guarantee i may say never never you can be happy and you can realize self are you happy can you cross old days coming very soon you are children very we like now you have grown to 40 50 60 and very soon old do you come you cannot control and death will come you cannot be happy so if you will follow the instructions of gita bhagavatam you can be happy whole world is now 
request this. They want to follow and to be happy. No problem if you are in family life even. You should be there. But why you cannot chant Hare Krishna or any name of Krishna or God, Supreme Personality of God? Any name. Oh. Even walking, driving, without mala, with mala, loudly, in, ha in heart, in mind, even. Taking bath, after taking bath, no problem at all. And you will be liberated, it is surely. So, <coughs> I have come here to help the, devo the devotees, the disciples of Swamiji. This was my main object. What he wanted to give to this world? The doctrines of Srimad Bhagavatam, Gita, Ved Upanishad. Sarve Sukhina Bhavantu. All should be happy in this world. Ma Tamasa Jyotir Gamayam. Don't go to uh, darkness. darkness. Come to light. What is that darkness? Endless chain of birth and death, suffering and sorrow. This is darkness. darkness. And what is light? To realize soul. Hmm? To realize super soul. And what is the relation between Supreme Lord and myself? Hmm? And that is love. Hmm? Without love, we are nothing. Perhaps you have heard that Love is God. God is love. But not what? Lust. Yeah. Not lust. Lust is different from pure love. In this world only lust is there. No love, pure love and affection. So our <coughs> Ved Upanishad and all literatures, Vedic literatures, give this instruction how to be happy in this life and after that life. You are thinking that you are this physical body, but this is like a garment. When it will be rotten, you will have to give up. If you don't like to give up, but forcibly, you will have to give up. Krishna has given this of very beautiful, this body will need to realize soul and super soul, and the relation between oh, supreme Lord and and soul. Not for oh, eating, drinking, and be merry like hawks and pigs and dogs. In comparison to these animals. Oh, we are like animals, more than animals. Because they cannot fight with bombs and atoms and so many things. But we do. So, Krishna has given mercifully this beautiful form that in this form we can realize super soul. We can hear Gita Bhagavatam, the teachings of high class of or oh, devotees, we can. We, but we have no time at all. Anyhow, only 24, 25, you local devotees have come. But I think that oh, mostly oh, the devotees from other parts have come. Because they have no taste. I think Dr. Sahib and his wife has advertised, advertised so much. But they have no time at all. They have to come. We have come from India, from Vrindavan, from Ajodhya, from Navadvi. For them, 
but they have no time to I want to go door to door, but it is <laughs> impossible for me. Oh, to beg that, oh, you so chant Krishna and be happy. But even they have no time to hear. Oh, <laughs> what can we say? I think that from tomorrow, you should bring all your relatives <laughs> to hear. That, oh, one Swamiji from India, hmm? he's calling us, oh, my dear children, my dear sons and daughters, Daughter. you should come and take something. Don't give anything. We don't want you, what you have. Hmm? I've only come for giving something and try to collect something for you to be ha happy for it. This is my object. Suppose a person is very wealthy, more than oh, Mr. Bush, an Indian Atal Bihari Ajpayee, or Mr. Clinton <laughs> and his wife. <laughs> it may be so wealthy, oh, very beautiful, very beautiful, handsome. And he has all the favorable things to be happy in this world. Gallon and gallons of what? Toxications. Drugs. Liquor. Liquor. Wine. Liquors. Wine. Ocean. Smoking. Meats. That's everything. A very beautiful 106 stories of building. So many things. Golden ornaments, everything you have. Then what is the need of doing bhajan? Or oh, Pundarik Prabhu, he should explain something about this in brief. In a Attractive. Attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Up to what time we will be speak? Eight. Eight or we like not like. Yes, we'll be ready to speak something. We're all very fortunate here today to assemble and uh, we have this very nice divine opportunity to hear from Shri Gurudev. His mercy, he ordered me to speak about this point, which is actually concerning all of us very deeply, very closely. Those who are here, all of them, and those who are not here, for them as well. Actually, it's for every living being who is existing in the creation. More so for those who have taken to human form of life. The preposition is a person who is having everything he is desiring in his life. Money, wealth, possessions, cars, buildings, friends, family, children, everything. So for such a person, definitely it's, uh, it's thoughtful that whether he needs to really worship God or not. Because he already has what he wants. So there's no need for him to beg and why worship God. But if we closely watch and observe the whole world around us, then we see the reality is ironic. Why? Because for the mass at large, all these things are simply dreams. They are 
desiring. They have not obtained it. They are calculating. This is how I want and this much I want. But they have not attained it. So there's very few numbers of <coughs> persons who actually may claim that they do have these things. So for the rest, there's obvious reason that they should, must engage in worshipping the Supreme Person. Now those who have, they have this physical body first of all, and in this physical body, there are some natural propensities which are equally affecting everyone, regardless of their position in the material world. Mr. Bush also feels hungry. He has to eat. And we heard that a few months back, when this whole thing about uh, September 11th attack was going on, then he ate some cookie and he fainted just by eating a cookie, and there was a big news about that. So, if that can happen to him, then what is the guarantee that it won't happen to anyone else? Lust, anger, greed, and hatred, the residing dacoits in everyone's heart, they do not let anyone sit peacefully for even a moment. The natural human nature, the conditioning, what is the conditioning? Want more, want more, want more. Always completely unsatisfied. If we look back in the history in the past, there have been many great kings and many great persons who actually were, we can say to some degree, were actually powerful. If we think of Hiranika Shipu, think of Raman, all these kings, they were really, really, very strong. They were controlling the entire universe and all the affairs of this universe. They could order the earth, fire, ether, and all these different elements to reverse their actions, their activities. Even it is said that for Raman, Lord Yamraj, who is considered as the demigod of death, he was under his feet. That great, that powerful. All these people in this world who think that they have so many things, are they powerful enough to counter their death? No. They're scared. Every moment they are dying. And what happens? Every moment their enemies multiply. Their own family men, their own friends become their enemy. And they want to kill them, they want to stab in the back. They can't trust them, really. So they have so many procedures to protect them, to secure them. But this is the ignorance. They have least idea about their own real self, who they are. They're only trying to protect their cloth, which is this body, resulting in miseries. Anyone who is in this material world must suffer threefold miseries. This is the law of this nature without a faith, everyone. And they're all going through these anxieties. Prahlad Maharaj in Srimad Bhagavatam, he says that, Tatasadhu manne asur vajja dehi naam, sada samud vigna dhyam asad grahata, hitvat napatam grihamanda kupam, vanam gato jat harim ashvayata. He's speaking to his father, who has asked him a question, that, oh my dear child, please tell me, what is the best of the knowledge which you have learned from your teachers? Prahlad Maharaj being just five years old at that time. And Hiranika Shipu, the powerful king controlling the whole universe, his father is inquiring. And the boy gently, sweetly is replying that, oh, best of the demons, to his father. And the father is becoming very proud. That, oh, my child, he is knowing my position. Best of the demons. This is the consciousness. Sometimes when we preach and we tell people that, oh, be careful what are you doing in your life, you're eating meat, you know, what will be the result? You'll end up becoming an animal next life. And then they become so covered, so deeply covered in the mode of ignorance, they say, no problem, what is the harm in becoming an animal? 
they are ready to become an atheist. In fact, they have so many arrangements now, especially here in America, to take care of their dogs. With all of them. It's a competition. Now, even when we see sometimes here and there some advertisements, so there are advertisements for the breakfast of dog. So we can see where human civilization is heading towards. The human form of life, which was meant to discuss about Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Discover yourself, who you are. Try to realize yourself and try to realize the eternal goal for which you have been given this wonderful vehicle of human body. The intelligence with which you can really understand this transcendental subject matter. We are using in becoming animals. So, Prahlad Maharaj is a plan that those people who have taken to the false conception of life as real, what is that false conception of life? Identifying oneself with this material body, thinking that we are this body, and thus making all the plans in their life simply to please and comfort this body. They cannot tolerate any pain or discomfort. And for that reason, they're ready to retaliate in any manner whatsoever. They can kill anyone, they can abuse anyone, they can insult anyone, they can cheat, they can steal, whatever. They don't really care. But what is happening? Their position is like a person who is trapped in the blind well. So we'll hear, hear the small example analogy which Sri Prabhupada Maharaj is giving, comparing our precarious situation in this material world. And if we can <coughs> hear carefully and realize and try to understand actually it's we who are in that well, then maybe by the grace of Lord, by the inspiration within and by the mercy of his pure devotees, we can come to our senses and start making serious endeavors to what we should be doing. There was a person, and this person, he was going in a forest. And when he went a little bit deep in the forest, he was chased by a lion. So now he was running for his life, running, 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 where to go. And we can understand we haven't, have, haven't had such experience, maybe some, but still, it seems a very difficult situation. A lion chasing. So he lost all his composure, and he's just running to save his life, not knowing which direction he'll really go or end up in. And as he's running, he found that there was one nice well where he could take shelter and be saved from the lion. But that that, that well was dry, blind, there was no water. <coughs> he was in great haste, so he jumped. Fortunately, there was a branch leaning over that well from a nearby tree. So he caught hold of those branches and hung himself down in that well. Now, he's hanging with his both arms, with both hands, holding that branch tightly, and the lion on the mouth of the well is roaring <laughs> and it's becoming more and more and more ferocious because his prey he could have just pounced upon is slipping out of his hands. So the line is disturbed. Too much disturbed. Maybe I can uh, uh, go all the way down at the bottom of the well and take shelter there. 
But just then when he wanted to do that, he noticed that, oh, there wasn't either peace waiting for him. That glance only added up to his miseries. What he saw? He saw scorpions, snakes, and all deadly uh, wild insects ready to bite him. Now what to do? Big problem. So he again tightened his grip with the branches. There's no other solution. I have to just hang myself to these branches. And just then, what started happening? Two rats. One white color and another black. They started eating the branch from both sides. Danger. And every step, the danger is becoming more and more intense and strong. What happened when he hung himself with that branch, the branch shook, and on top of that branch, there was another branch, and on that branch, there was a beehive. So, when the branches shook, then this beehive also was disturbed. So all the bees were flying here and there. But where they will go? They were sitting peacefully, and this person has disturbed their uh, nice moments. So now, they thought, okay, let's teach him a lesson. We were sitting here peacefully. We were not bothering him. So they started uh, doing what? Stingy, stingy. No, they started kissing him. <laughs> they said, no, we're trying to tell him sweetly that don't disturb us. Why disturb us? But that turned out to be a very uh, painful sting. So from their side, it wasn't like that. In the meantime, that honey which was contained in the beehive started dripping, drop by drop, drop by drop. And just fortunately close enough to his mouth. <laughs> right close. And then he thought, oh, this is honey drops. So he started licking. Drop by drop that honey. And that sweetness of that honey for a little while made him completely forget where he was. Was he standing, was he hanging, was he sitting, or whatever. And he was being chased by danger from all sides. Completely forgot. And he started enjoying that bliss of tasting the honey drops. Now, we can all see what is the situation of this person. One small, another example, just to highlight and focus this point. In olden days, the kings, they used to give many kinds of punishments to the prisoners. One severe kind was that they would take the pr prisoner uh, on a boat in the river and the soldiers, they would take that person and they will dunk, dunk, him. dunk. dunk him in the water all the way, completely, his head also. And this person, what is the situation? He is struggling to take one single breath. And just then, when he will die, they will take him out from the water. And what he will do? <gasps> Sunlight is back. And before he can take that breath completely to fill his lungs, they again get him, dunk him in the water. Now, for the moment when he comes up the surface of water, can we estimate the pleasure he's feeling? <laughs> no. We cannot, because we are not in that situation. But for him, that's everything. Ask him, you want thousand dollars? No. You want a big house? No. You want a good wife? No. You want pizza? No. <laughs> what you want? <gasps> Don't ask me a question. But anyone who is standing on the ground can very well understand, oh, this person, is in such a miserable condition. If he could just come on the ground and just be there peacefully, <laughs> he'll be in bliss. <coughs> so here, try to understand the definition of pleasure, the definition of happiness, or the desire for happiness is varying in different situations we fall in. According to the different degrees of uh, miseries, our Longing for happiness changes. One thing which may be very pleasing for us in one condition, in another condition, 
Maybe not. And that is why Shastras very clearly tell that any kind of happiness which you can think of, which you can conceive of, within this material, flat, uh, uh, material universe, it's false. It is standing on a platform of falsity. So, it will never give you real satisfaction. At the end of it, you will turn out only to be more frustrated and disappointed. And we all see, most of the times we try to love so many, you know, those who we like. But what we see, we don't get proper reciprocation for them. Instead, they have their love for some, some other men or some other object or some other people. So we get frustrated. Mother and father, they take so much pain to bring up their child. But what happens when the child grows, becomes young? He doesn't care anymore about his mother and father. He doesn't even think what pain they went through. 